Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, January 6th, 2012. Today's the first Q&A video for the year 2012. It's been a pretty mild winter in this part of Canada. Usually it's really cold at this time and we have a lot more snow. The lakes will be frozen up. You can go snowmobiling, ice fishing on them, but this year you can't even go on the lake because the ice is too thin. In some places there's not even any ice. It surely hasn't been a good year for snowmobilers. I haven't even seen one out yet. But even so, I've been pretty busy with snowblowers anyways. I'm surprised I had so many to repair at this time. It also did give me a bit of spare time to make more videos or to edit the videos I already had filmed. So it was good that way. Anyways, let's get started with the questions today. The first question I have today is sometimes YouTubers ask me if the carburetor on the MS-170 and 180 steel chainsaw is adjustable or not? Well the answer to that is no, the carburetor is non-adjustable and you'll find the same carburetor on the MS-170 as on the 180. And even if you take the cover off you're going to see there are no adjusting screws at all for the carburetor. The only screw there is is for the idle speed which you would insert a screwdriver through this hole here, turn in the screw to idle faster and turn it out to idle slower. That's the only adjustment that this carburetor has. I have never seen one with an adjustable carburetor. So if you own an MS-170 or a 180, your carburetor is non-adjustable. I have a video showing how to adjust the idle speed though on that chainsaw and I'll put the link below this video so you can go check it out. It's an easy thing to do, but you're rarely going to have to do this adjustment. My next question today is in regards to the drain valve on the Tecumseh carburetors, which you will find on some snowblower engines. People often ask me, what do you do when the little valve starts to leak? You can buy just the valve kit here, but what often happens is if it's time to replace that valve, it's also time to replace the bowl, especially if it gets corroded. What I do is I usually replace it with a bowl that doesn't have the valve. You can drill out the hole and put a new valve here if you want, but I just leave it the way it is because I find that these little valves sometimes can leak even if they're new. But if you really want to keep your valve, you can buy a little valve kit for this. I'll put the part number underneath this video for it. And you can just replace it and hopefully it won't leak again. The reason why the valve's here is so that when you're done using it for the season, you just push on the valve and the fuel that's in the carburetor will come out. And in that way you don't have fuel sitting in it for months at a time. Thus preventing a possible problem of fuel going bad on you and dirtying the carburetor at the same time. I also want to thank all the responses after watching last week's Q&A video where I showed pictures of what rodents can do in some equipment that is stored for a while. A YouTuber was nice enough to send me these pictures so that I could show them to you. Now some of the responses I got in order to prevent rodents from building nests in your equipment is to use mothballs and maybe some dryer sheets. I've heard of the mothballs but I've never heard of the dryer sheets but I can see how these could keep animals away because of the scent on them. If you do have more suggestions on how to keep rodents away from your equipment, please post your comments underneath this video. I'm sure everybody else will appreciate it. And I also want to thank everybody for their comments in regards to the octane levels in the fuel and should you use it in a four cycle engine. You can go look at last week's Q&A video and read the comments if you want to see all the comments that were posted there. But I do appreciate you guys commenting, it does help all the viewers watching these videos. And while we're on this subject, I'm just going to show you my snowblower with a Tecumseh engine. Specifically, I'm going to show you the engine tag on it, and there it talks about the fuel that you should use in it. And I've got it up like this so you can see the tag better. And here it says, fuel regular unleaded. I will take that as being the lowest octane of fuel. So that's what I get out of that. So always check your equipment to see if there's an engine tag like that, and maybe it's going to tell you exactly what they recommend for your engine. Okay, my last question today, I've got Craig the Muskoka Painter, you've met him before, he started a new channel on painting, and he's got a question that a lot of you guys have probably asked me in the past. So what's your question there, Craig? Well, Donnie, I have a generator that I ran one season, ran it a couple of times one winter, we had some power out, and then it was stored for a little while, and now it won't start, so I'm wondering what the problem might be. What happens sometimes, Craig, is when you leave a generator sit for a while, the gas goes bad. And it's not a piece of equipment that we use a lot. As you know, we might use it once a year if the power goes off. So most of the time it just sits there, the fuel goes bad. Then when we go to use it, it just won't start. Another issue that we get sometimes, especially with the Chinese generators, 
is I find even if the fuel has not gone bad in it, they still won't start. So I'll just show you a quick trick of what I do when this happens. What I do, Craig, sometimes is I grab a can of Quick Start or some flammable penetrating oil. I take the air filter cover off and I spray some right in the carburetor. I've got a generator here and I'll just show you quickly what I mean. Perfect. Here's a Chinese generator and this is what I do. I take the air filter off, take the foam off. And in there you can see the carburetor. You want to make sure that the choke's not on. And then you just go in and you spray a couple shots so it goes right in the carb. And then it should start. Make sure to put the choke on when you do this so it helps to suck in the starting fluid right in the engine. And once you get the fuel moving, it'll just keep going. Sometimes these generators, that's all they need. They just need a bit of help to get going and then they'll run good. It usually happens when I don't use the generator for quite a while. Then make sure to put everything back on once it's running properly. I do have a video that shows how to do this. I'll post a link below this video as well. It's an older video. It's not in HD but it does show you exactly how I do it with a generator. Thanks Donnie, that's going to help me out this year and if I get power out, I'm going to have a backup generator. So, thanks again buddy. Alright, well hopefully that helps. If uh, it doesn't work after that, then maybe it needs to be looked at further. Right Alright guys, that's about all the time I have for this week. And a special thanks for Craig for being here, for asking the question. Thanks again for watching and thanks for all your support. Please make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next time.